All right, guys. We're down here in Largo, Florida, and we're hanging out with Jason from uh, Weld.com, and of course, all the guys here at Weld.com. And they invited us down to uh, come and see the shop and do a little bit of welding. So, Jason, thanks for uh, having me down. Thanks for making the trip, man. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a little bit of a trek from, from Pensacola, but. Not too bad. It was a good excuse to get down this way and uh, have a little bit of fun, see a different beach from Pensacola. Right. You get to see y'all shop, man, because y'all got a lot of cool machines right here. I got a couple little toys. Yeah, you got a few nice toys up in here. We'll give you guys a little quick uh, shop tour of all their machinery and equipment. And uh, if you don't know Weld.com, they primarily do educational type welding videos on YouTube. And uh, for all you guys that might be uh, going to trade school or you might be a home do-it-yourselfer or just trying to learn welding on your own, They've got a lot of great videos to uh, learn all different weld welding processes from. Is that right? Yeah, we pretty much go through, we cover the basics, intermediate, and then advanced levels of the different processes. So stick, MIG, TIG, flux core, gas shielded flux core, plasma arc cutting, CNC, uh, plasma cutting, oxy fuel. I mean, pretty much everything. There's uh, We have basic, intermediate, and then advanced level uh, videos that you can watch and follow along at home as, as long as you have the same equipment. and. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Education is, is a big thing that we try to promote. Uh, try to promote the, the correct way to do things uh, versus some of the old habits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I love y'all's videos. You always uh, you know, have some excellent film qualities, and I love the, everything that you try to promote out there and teach you know, the different processes. Thank you. So excellent videos. Make sure you guys check out weld.com. Give them a sub. Watch their videos. I guarantee you're going to learn something from their videos. So I think I might be learning something today from Jason. And what we're gonna be doing, let me show you guys this right here. We're gonna be running this big boy, three quarter inch Cormet. This was a F25. Welding rod, look at this guy right here. Look at this. Three quarter inch diameter. You guys wanna talk about a stick electrode? <laughs> this is it right here. So he's gonna be showing me how to run this guy today. And he's already informed me that this is primarily, or I think it only is, a flat rod. Right? Yeah, flat only. So it's going to be a flat rod. So he's already prepped this piece of plate right down here. And I'm going to be attempting to run this three-quarter inch rod across this plate and see what kind of weld bead I can, I can do with it. I'm looking forward to it. We're going to be using a thousand, we're going to be running a thousand amps. One thousand right? amps. 1000 amp. I'll show you guys the machine in a minute which one we're going to be use the uh, DC 1000 over there. So I'm ready to give it a shot, man. Once we get done, uh, we're going to go ahead and do a, a cut and an acid etch. Yeah. So we'll actually cut the plate up. We'll do a, a nice polish on there. Yeah. And then we'll expose that with an, an acid etch that we use. And you'll actually be able to see the depth of penetration uh, using 1000 amps on three quarter inch rod and three quarter inch plate. All right. Very cool. Can you real quick tell the viewers? why they would use a rod like this in so industry typically this is used in like foundries where they have the big uh the castings and the molds and um what do you the crucibles so anytime that those get cracked or damaged they would go in there and kind of grind out the repair area and it's usually set up on a tripod however we don't have the tripod uh so we're just going to go ahead and, and manhandle this thing i think this rod is built for uh for a bomb uh, he's a big <laughs> enough guy to be able to run it so he shouldn't have too many issues but yeah uh it's very similar to a 7018 in how it runs not in its uh its characteristics, but um, as far as the way that it runs. So it's, it's a very smooth running rod. You just lean it down. Like I said, typically it's ran on a tripod, so you're just gonna kind of hold it in place and you're just gonna kind of direct it where it needs to go and the so rod's gonna do all the work. We're just gonna lay it on the joint. Just lay it right on the just joint. Lay it on the joint and just guide it right along the, uh, you know. Right, right along the weld seam. Right along the weld seam there. So very cool, man. I'm looking forward to trying this guy oh, out. Oh, they're fun. Oh yeah. I'm looking forward to it. One more thing that we may try to do if we have enough time. Um, Jason is a certified welding instructor. Inspector. And uh, you certify as well, yep. uh, weld, weld coupons. And I've got a previous video where I helped them machine some of the rollers for their uh, test bending machine. So he may, he may send me with some uh, coupons to take back to the shop and I'll do some welding in my shop, film that. I'm gonna send them back down here for Jason and he's gonna do his test and I might, even get a proper certification for the shop. So we may add that to the uh, to the video later on. How about Sounds it? like a plan. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, we want to show you the machine, so we'll check that out, and then we're going to get in here and get suited up, and we're going to run a weld bead, hopefully. Oh, <laughs> for sure. 
For our welding today, there's our plate. Looks like we got, that's three quarter plate, right? We've got our DC 1000 welding machine that we're gonna be used by Ready Arc. And this is gonna be running off a big generator. So let's go check that out. This is the big Ready Arc generator that we're gonna use to uh, run the 1000 amp machine. Let's go ahead and fire this bad boy up. We're gonna give it about 15 seconds and we're gonna go from low to high. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead. We're gonna go into high. Give it a try. Tell me when you're ready. All right, let's roll. All right, so right now we're hitting just over a thousand amps. Almost 1100. He's just going to use a regular drag technique, very similar to a 7024. You can see it as a super fluid puddle. I'm really interested to see what type of deposition we got on here. Now it is extremely hot, so he's probably going to run about half the plate, and then we'll stop and let it cool down. We're going to do a cut and etch. I want to see what this uh, this penetration profile looks like. We have two 500 amp rated ground clamps hooked up to this, or workpiece clamps hooked up to the material because we're running those uh, right off the same machine. You just can't run a thousand amps off one cable. Same thing with the makeshift stinger. We got two 500 amp cables running to that. It's almost up to the point, but you can see how fluid that puddle is, and that's exactly why you're only gonna be able to run this in a flat position. You're not getting out of position with this thing anyway, but uh, you wouldn't be able to run like a horizontal T-joint with this either, because the puddle's super fluid. You'd never be able to maintain that vertical leg on the piece. actually see the spatter coming off this thing. It's the size of small shooter marbles. This stuff's pretty intense. And like I said, the heat coming off it is just extreme. We've got three fume extractors coming on here to pull off the amount of fume that it's generating. 
and it's probably still not adequate enough. Man, I can't wait to dig into this and see what the uh, penetration profile looks like on this. I bet it goes halfway, three quarter through. Man, that's hot. <laughs> Look how sweet that is. You can feel the, you can feel the UV off that one. I was trying to get a little bit extra rod in there. I was having too much fun. So you, you came down here, uh, <laughs> go work on your tan lines at the beach. You didn't uh -huh. think you'd be able to do it here in the shop. No. Nah. Look, the concrete's glowing underneath. Wow. The uh, I could tell when I first started, we were just like blowing through. It was there, there wasn't enough material there at the very end of the yeah, plate to it's, support it. It kind of poured off the end yeah, just a little off, bit. But as I got into there, you know, it started uh, flowing a pretty decent puddle there. What it feel like holding all that? It's just, it's crazy, man. Like it's, it's a total different feeling to me having to hold a rod like this with, you know, two arms the way I am. It's right. kind of like you said, it's like holding a minigun. Yeah. That's what it feels like, you're holding a minigun. But yeah, it's a little awkward, it's, but it's, uh, it's a neat experience. It's, uh, it's a little bit on your back because you got to, you know, where it's positioned at down here, um, you just got to kind of hold it. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's an interesting experience though. Now we got to find a, a chipping hammer big enough to knock all that slag off. We'll get it cleaned up. <laughs> uh, I think we let it cool down just for a little bit. Uh, we might even quench it because we're not doing a bend test on it. Yeah. But we'll get it cooled down enough. Uh, we'll cut, you know, do a flame cut probably halfway, three quarter of the way through. Yeah, somewhere and in then, here. Yeah, and then we'll just, we'll, uh, what we'll do is we'll cut that with the oxy fuel, clean it up with a couple different types of grinding discs. Yeah. And just to kind of polish that, bring it to a, closely to a mirror finish. Yeah. And then we'll hit it with, uh, I think we have 5% uh, ferratic acid or ferric acid and it'll just kind of bring out that weld nugget. You'll be able to see the dissimilarities between the weld nugget and the actual the base metal. All right, cool. So, so we'll be able to see you know, what kind of penetration I got exactly. on that right there. I'm, I'm thinking it's, I mean, that's three quarter inch plate, probably half inch to three quarters of the way through the plate, if not all the way. Like, I mean, as soon as you got done, you can see the glowing reflection oh, yeah. off, the, off the concrete. Yeah. So you could tell, I mean, the heat's definitely getting into it. Yeah. And the whole time you were going, I think you were hitting right around 1,100 amps. No kidding. Yeah. So that's, that's the highest actually, tampers I've ever run on anything. Oh, for sure. <laughs> All right, we'll go cut it and uh, do it. Do our acid etch on yeah, it. Yeah, let's get cleaned up. Look at the size of that weld bead right there. My hand by it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, chip the flux off of it and get a look at her bead here. What's under the hood? I almost need a pickaxe. <laughs> That's right. This would be a good one for a me uh, needle scaler, too. Oh, for sure. We'll get all cleaned off. seen to do that before right there it's almost like little pockets and, it, and that, it's kind of like uh, because of how fluid that puddle actually is I think is because it's it's just so liquid you can't control it whereas like with uh, 7018 7024 you got a thicker slag coverage okay so it's easier to, to maintain a, a good clean bead appearance okay well this stuff I don't think it really matters I mean when they're welding up those big uh, uh, what do they call them? Flag pots. When they're welding up the big flag pots, it, uh, I, don't, I don't think they care about looks as long as it's going to hold and, right, right. and resist. Yeah. This kind of stuff isn't going to be out there on uh, on Instagram for the prettiest welds. Oh, no, no, no. These are uh, hashtag real welds. Yep. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so we'll put, uh, yeah, we'll get it all cleaned up, quenched, cut it, polished up, all and right. uh, check out that depth of penetration in there. That's really what I wanted to see. I know we had a lot of comments uh, when we, we previously did this. They wanted to see an acid etch on it. So okay. I think we'll give that to the fans. All right, cool. <laughs> there, there, there we go.
what's your process on what we're going to do here with your acid etch? So anytime we want to do an etch, uh, we just want to bisect the weld. So we're just going to okay. cut the material. You can flame cut it, you can put it in the saw. Doesn't matter as long as you cut it. Now we're going to go through a process of cleaning and prepping it up. So I'm going to take this uh, Victor grain. This thing just eats material. I'm going to clean this up, kind of get it down rough, get the, the bulk of the, uh, the cut striations out of there. Hit it up with a, a regular flapper wheel, clean that up, and then finally take it down to almost close to a mirror polish. Once we get to that stage, we'll actually be able to use some of this 10% uh, ferric chloride, and we'll put some of that on there with uh, Q-tips, and it'll expose the weld nugget, and you'll be able to see the dissimilarities between the two uh, metals. You'll be able to see the depth of penetration, the width, all that good stuff. So okay. we just got to get it to close to a mirror finish. The closer we get it to a mirror finish, the better off the results are going to be. Right. Okay. I was just seeing which one you got here. So you got a, a 60 grit uh, flap disc there. And then this is the one that's got the scotch bright. Yeah, it's got the, So this one right here, you can actually take this if you're doing detail work. Um, you can take it pretty much from weld to paint in one step. So you only need to use that wheel. Okay. Uh, and then this one right here, it's like I said, just we beveled tons of plates with it, taking backing strips off material. I mean, they seem to last a lot longer. The great thing about them is as you're grinding, when the, uh, the abrasive breaks, it breaks into another diamond shape. Okay. So it's just layers and layers of little diamonds on the uh, on the inside, and it just continuously cuts until you completely wear it out. Yeah, that's cool. I've never seen it before. It's it's a lot thin than a lot thinner than your typical abrasive. Right. Steel it's so it, it gives you a little bit of flex to it as well. Yeah. All right. Cool. We're just going to take this stuff and kind of glob it on here. It'll take a little bit, but you'll see a reaction. It's starting to come out right now. See right there? Yep. Yep, I can see it. This is a pretty good angle where you can get So not right not as deep as I thought it was gonna be. I mean Me that's either. still it's still pretty impressive because it's three quarter inch plate and oh well, yeah, just measure from the back. You can side. actually see Got about about three eighths. Got about three eighths penetration in there. So it starts right there, follows all the way down, mm -hmm. right up into there, and you can actually so, see where the two plates originally butted up. So we got about halfway through the about halfway the, into the plate. It's about <clears throat> there's about three eighths. Yeah. We've, about halfway there. Without any joint preparation whatsoever. So it was just a square butt plate. So you got right. three eighths depth of fusion, depth of penetration. That's interesting. I'm a little um, disappointed in my, you know, inclusions there, the little holidays. But well, I think you know, for yeah. running, running, running. Yeah, that's easy for you to say. I think for running a process, you know, manually that's meant to be done mechanized. Mm -hmm. That's not bad at all. I mean, this process isn't meant to do what we did with it, but uh, it's cool to be able to, to mess around with it. I mean, how often can you say, yeah, I ran three quarter inch welding rod? That's, that's <laughs> probably gonna be the only time I ever run a three quarter welding rod because it's not like it's very practical yeah, it's in not. the everyday world. You, gotta, but... you get a small repair on the shop, you know, you're not gonna bust out <laughs> the old DC no. 1000. No, we might use a one eight seventy eighteen or a five thirty second at the most. But. Yeah, and then to do some basic joint preparation. I mean, you could, no problem, do a full pen weld on it. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's about it. I had a lot of fun 
getting to uh, run the uh, Ready Arc DC 1000 and that three quarter inch rod, and uh, you know watching Jason do the uh, the polish and the acid etch on this plate. This was uh, I just I had a great time. I can't thank him enough for inviting us down here into the shop and uh, hanging out with him, bringing the camera for all you guys to enjoy a little bit of video. So, Jason. Thanks for having me in. I appreciate you making the time to uh, to come out and visit us, man. It's good yeah, seeing you. Absolutely. It was uh, it was a great excuse to get out of the house and get out of my shop and come down and visit you guys and uh, and see your shop. You got a excellent place here. A lot of great machinery, a lot of good equipment, and uh, it's it's been a lot of fun. So let me let me run that that big electrode, man. No, it's it's fun. It's like a like I said, once in a lifetime opportunity to do it. So it's kind of that's right. Kind of neat just to kind of put that in your toolbox. Yeah. Yeah, it's not something that we're going to be using every day, but it was definitely fun to be able to do it and just say, yep, I did it. I ran one of those. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, we will see you later.